Hey everybody, welcome again to another one of my videos. I am beginning to make a series of videos on finding the domain in ranges of functions. So this is just the first video of many to come, and in this video I'm just going to focus on finding the domain of a function. So the first thing I want to explain to you is what is the domain of a function? And I wrote that for you in blue, and the domain of a function is all the possible x values of a function. So any possible x value is part of the domain of a function. So one thing you have to ask yourself when you're trying to find the domain of a function, and I wrote this for you in green, is what is not a possible x value? Or in other words, what is not part of the domain? So there are two really common problems when you try to find the domain of a function. And for each of those problems, you have to remember one thing. So the first type of problem is a rational function. And I wrote for you a rational function, f of x is equal 1 over x minus 3. And the one thing that you have to remember for a rational function is that the denominator, and I circled the denominator for you, the denominator can never equal 0. And the second really common type of function when you're trying to find the domain is a square root function. Okay, and whenever you are trying to find the domain of a square root function, you have to remember that the inside of a square root, so x minus 4, the inside, has to be positive. Or in other words, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. So that is the one main thing that you have to remember when you're trying to find the domain of a square root function, remember that the inside of a square root has to be greater than or equal to zero. Otherwise, otherwise um, it's not possible because then it's an imaginary number. And that rule is not just for square roots. That rule also applies to any even root. So a square root has a two root. Um, so any even root, so if there was a four or a six, um, the inside of it has to be greater than or equal to zero. So I'm going to get started with these two easier examples, and then later on in this video I will go over some more complicated examples. So let's try and find the domain of the function 1 over x minus 3. So when you're trying to find the domain, you have to ask yourself, what is not a possible x value, or what are the restrictions that we have for x? And like I said earlier, in a rational function, the denominator can never equal 0. So since x minus 3 is the denominator, x minus 3 can never equal 0. And the equal sign with the diagonal line through it means cannot equal. So if we add 3 to both sides, we get x cannot equal 3. And once again, this is a really easy example. You probably realize that if you plug 3 into your function, it makes the denominator equal 0. So that is not possible, so 3 is not part of the domain. So now I'm going to make a number line to graph all the possible values in our domain. I'm going to plot our point 3, and I'm going to put an open circle around 3 because x cannot equal 3. So since x cannot equal 3, I'm going to put an open circle around 3, and the domain is any other value except 3. And it's really common to write your domain in interval notation. So the domain goes all the way from negative infinity to 3, and from 3 all the way to positive infinity. So let's move on to our next example. Uh, here we have the function f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 4. So we need to ask ourselves. What is not a possible x value? And like I said earlier, the inside of a square root can never be negative. It has to be greater than or equal to 0. So x minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. And if we add 4 to both sides, we get x is greater than or equal to positive 4. And I'm going to graph our domain on the number line. I'm going to plot our number 4. x can be greater than or equal to 4. So since there's an equal sign, 
Underneath the greater than, I'm going to put a closed circle around 4 since it is included. And x is greater than or equal to 4, so since it's greater than, I'm going to color in everything to the right. So our domain for this particular function is 4 or anything greater than 4. And once again, I'll write this in interval notation. Our domain is 4. I'm putting a bracket since 4 is included all the way to infinity. So these are two really easy examples. They probably don't get much easier than this. So let's move on to something a little bit more complicated. So here we have the function f of x is equal to the square root of x squared minus 6x plus 8. So we're trying to find the domain. So once again, we're trying to find all the possible x values. Um, so we have to ask ourselves, what is not a possible x value, or what are the restrictions uh, for x? And like I said before, for a square root function or any even root function, the inside of the root has to be positive. So the inside of the root has to be greater than or equal to 0. So x squared minus 6x plus 8 has to be greater than or equal to 0, or else it's an imaginary number. So now we have to solve this quadratic inequality. Um, if you do not know how to solve quadratic inequalities, I suggest you go back uh, to my website to watch that video, or you can watch it on my channel page on YouTube. So the first thing we have to do is we have to factor this. We have to pick two numbers that multiply and give us positive 8 uh, that also add or subtract and give us negative 6. And the first thing I want to do is just write my two parentheses and put my two x's, which give us our x squared. And once again, we need to pick two numbers that multiply to positive 8 and also add or subtract to negative 6. And certainly, if we pick negative 2 and negative 4, negative 2 times negative 4 gives us positive 8, and also negative 2 plus negative 4 definitely gives us our negative 6. And this is all greater than or equal to 0. Now if we solve this inequality like a normal equation, we would get our answer is x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 4. However, this is not an equation, this is an inequality. So I'm just going to make my number line. I'm going to plot my 2 and I'm going to plot my 4. So if you plug in 2 for x on the left side of the inequality, you get 0 on the left side. And 0 is certainly greater than or equal to 0. Um, so 2 is definitely part of the solution since that makes the inequality true. And the same goes for 4. If you plug in 4 to the left side of the inequality for x, you get a 0 on the left side. And 0 is certainly greater than or equal to 0 since it makes inequality true. That's part of the solution. So I'll put a closed circle around 4. Now I want to test out my three intervals to see which intervals are true. And to test my interval all the way on the left, I'm going to pick any number inside the interval. So I can pick any number that is less than 2. So I will just pick 0 since that's an easy number. To test my interval in the middle, I'm going to pick any number in between 2 and 4. So I'll just pick 3. And to test my interval all the way on the right, I will pick any number that's greater than 4. So I'll just pick 5. So let's start with our test point 0 and plug that in for x. If you plug 0 in for x, you get 0 minus 2, which is a negative number. And then you get 0 minus 4, which is also a negative number. So a negative times a negative is certainly a positive. And a positive number is definitely greater than or equal to 0. Um, so that makes the inequality true. Since 0 makes the inequality true, every number on this interval makes the inequality true. So that is part of our domain. So now let's do our test point 3. If we plug in 3 for x, we get 3 minus 2, which is a positive number, multiplied by 3 minus 4, which is a negative number. And a positive times a negative is always going to be negative, And that is certainly not greater than or equal to 0. A negative number is 
never greater than or equal to zero. So that is not part of our solution. So I'm not going to color in any of the interval where three is. And lastly, we will test our point five. If we plug in five in for x, we get five minus two is a positive number multiplied by five minus four, which is another positive number. A positive multiplied by a positive is a positive number, which is certainly greater than or equal to zero. So we can color in everything where the interval five is. So now I'm going to write our domain in interval notation. X can equal anything from negative infinity all the way to two and two is part of the solution. So I will put a bracket around two or it could equal anything from four. Four is part of the solution. So I'm going to put a bracket around four all the way to positive infinity. So now let's move on to an even harder example.